Let's start with the political rumblings in Italy. Europe has been a key source of demand for Chinese exports. How do the political rumblings in Italy and the contagion that we're likely going to see or potentially going to see in other parts of the Eurozone, how is that possibly going to prove a drag in terms of the demand picture uh, for China? Well, Tom, um, Europe is the second largest export destination for China, accounting for 17% of China's exports. So in view of the increased external uncertainty, we think the Chinese policymakers are already fine-tuning their pace of deleveraging, evidenced by the recent reserve recovery ratio cuts and also the extended grace periods for both asset management rule and the liquidity management rule. Um, so what does that mean? I think it's not a reversal of the leveraging. They, they are still in tightening cycle, but the bulk of the tightening may well be passed. Um, so in the past 24 months, China's uh, total credit growth decelerated rapidly from close to 17% to currently only 12%. I think going forward, the pace of deceleration in credit growth in China will be much milder. We are expecting around uh, slightly above 11% credit growth by end of this year and slightly below 11% by end of next year. So that means uh, they will keep cutting reserve recovery ratio to cushion the impact from regulatory tightening on shadow banking to smooth the liquidity condition. And by doing that, we think they are basically preventing the over tightening risk in China. Mm. Could the PBOC consider a cut to the benchmark rate if the political chaos in Europe becomes uh, more sustained and if the tensions between Beijing and Washington exacerbate? No, I think uh, the major tool they are going to do is more about uh, fine-tuning of the pace of like, these uh, quantitative, uh, quantitative tools, including the credit growth, uh, the reserve requirement ratio, rather than cutting benchmark deposit rate. But uh, that said, we have already mo- removed our core of benchmark rate type. Uh, we are expecting modest increase in deposit rate by liberalization of the deposit rate cap. Um, so they are not going to hike the benchmark rate. Mm. Does the news that we got out overnight from Washington in terms of these tariffs on $50 billion worth of Chinese goods, does that change your calculus around the growth outlook? Because you've raised your growth outlook for 2018 to 6.6%. Yes, I mean, uh, our forecast of a growth outlook is slightly above strict consensus based on, number one, the resilient consumption in China, supported by robust job market, number two, the global uh, benign dynamic. Um, and I agree with you, the uh, trade dispute is one of the risks. Um, and given these uncertainties and the twists about these uh, trade tensions between US and China, we are closely watching that. But um, I think the escalation over time through negotiations remain our base case because we see areas that China and the US can find some middle ground uh, to make some mutual beneficial progress. For example, to meet China's own demand of consumption upgrading and the cleaner environment like today in Beijing we have blue skies. But if they want to keep that, they probably need to increase the purchase of uh, agricultural goods, of uh, uh, natural gas uh, from the U.S. And by widening market access, by cutting tariffs, it's also consistent with China's own goal of uh, uh, promoting the domestic R&D and helping the transition of the economy. So we still believe uh, over time the two parties can probably reach a deal uh, by China increasing imports from the U.S. We have there is a potential of 60 to 90 billion dollars uh, of increase in purchase from China, um, primarily on agriculture, energy, followed by chemical and transportation equipment. So the escalation remain our base case. What about the yuan? 6.4 went through the 6.4 level yesterday. Are we going to see more of the short bets against the RMB piling up now? Uh, no, I think the recent weakness of the yuan against the dollar is largely a function of the dollar. The dollar wanted due to all this uh, uncertainty in the market. But if you look at the yuan against its trade weight basket, it has been quite stable in recent weeks. 
And we think um, the PBOC is probably focusing on the stability of the tra uh, trade weighted basket rather than the uh, thing YUSD. So going forward, uh, they are likely to continue to promote the capital account convertibility by increasing the opening up of uh, capital market, both be it Bond Connect, Stock Connect, and the QC program. By doing that, we see continue the inflow to Chinese market. For example, after the global indices include uh, Chinese bond market, we are expecting more than 250 billion potential inflow to Chinese bond. So we think China's balance of payment will be largely stable. Then the risk of the devaluation of renminbi against its trade-weighted basket is quite small.